We'll go ahead and uh, get started here. Yes, it's coming on. It's turning on. Um, what we're going to do is the first thing where we're going to start is I really haven't explained the electric field to you yet, but um, here's here's a pro here's one of your homework problems. How many of you have tried this? I know some of you have tried this at home. And right, right. I could tell by the way you were talking about it that okay. Here's an electric field. And what we're gonna do is I will also turn on the lights and and for right but here's your problem. Alright? You don't know what an electric field is. Yeah, I've taught it to you, but here's one of the problems. So we're, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do it combined here. We're gonna look at the electric field and do this problem at the same time. Because one of the things I can do, here's one of the things I can do is I think I can bounce back and forth between this and the document camera and I can write on this instead of writing on the board. Of course, none of it will probably show up on the screen. Is this showing up on the screen? Okay. All right, good. Cool. All right, so here's, here's, here's what we have. All right, here's the deal, as we say. Uh, we've got uh, a positive charge of Q2 here, positive charge of Q1 here, and we want to figure out what the electric field is at this point. Okay? Well, let me show you something about electric fields first. Listen, I, I think sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words. Now, here we go. Here's a FET. Here's... What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a 1 nano coulomb charge, which is what we're dealing with anyway. Here's a 1 nano coulomb charge right here. Boom. And let's show the electric field. What's it look like? All right. So out of this electric field, you can see it's a positive charge, so the electric field goes away. It goes out. Okay? So, and these are under electrostatic conditions. In other words, we're not allowing the charges really to move. So those charges go out. All right? Now then, um, let's see what happens when I take, make a dipole here. I'm going to take this negative charge and put it, oh, first of all, let's take another positive charge and kind of put it right over it. What do you think is going to happen to those electric field lines? Let's say there's six electric field lines coming out of the one charge. If I put, if I double the charge, how many electric field lines should be coming out of it? Twelve, exactly, and they're uniform, okay? But I think what they do is they just bunch them up more. Well, they added actually, they just kind of made it a little bigger that way. All right. Okay. All right. So now let's take this thing here. So now we've got two charges. Let's put another charge down here just for giggles. There we go. Now let's take a negative charge. Put it here. All right. But before I do that, before I do that, now I'm teasing you. I know this stuff. Okay. So now these electric field lines looks like they're pushing out this way kind of like a gravitational field, so this is an electric field. What would happen if I put a not, if I put a negative charge right here and was and allowed it to go and let it go? What would it do? What would it want to do if I put a negative charge right here? What would it do? Would it go towards those two positive charges or away? Towards it, exactly. It would go to it go whoosh, towards it. But if I glue one on there somehow, if I take one and, and don't allow it to move and put it right here, what it's going to do is, boom, it's going to attract these field lines are going to go into it. Notice there's an electric field between the two of them. Now, I'm also putting this up here to show you about your lab that you're going to be doing next week. You're going to be computing, you're going to be drawing electric field lines, and you're going to wind up with something that looks kind of like this, except you're going to do it in a strange way. They're going to talk to you about voltage. You're going to use this voltmeter thing, and we don't even get to volts until next chapter. All right? So we'll be kind of in the middle. Of, again, the lab is a little bit ahead of the um, lecture, but not too bad. So basically, now, now watch what happens. Can you, can you read the voltage on this thing? Notice right there, it's like positive 30.5 volts, right? So it's positive voltage on this side. Now. What do you think it's going to be if I, as I move, what's going to happen as I get closer to that positive tube? Notice it goes up, goes way up. It's up to 80. Now, let's go over. Boing. Okay, it's pretty high. Now, it's, what's, what's happening to the voltage as I get near the negative side? It's decreasing. It's decreasing. Now, it's a negative. Not, oh, and now it changed over. Now, it's negative. So, somewhere... In fact, let's plot the, here's what you're going to be doing in lab. You're going to be finding 
let's plot this voltage right here too. You're going to be finding these voltage lines and you're going to be finding where it's zero. Okay, you're going to use a little probe and it's going to show you where it's zero. Okay, and then you're going to draw, now notice, what kind of angle does this arrow make with this, with this voltage, with this, um, here's our voltage, here's our potential line, and here's our electric field. What kind of angle does it make? 90 degrees. It's perpendicular. So you're going to go around, and let's pretend this is a zero voltage line here because it's between, in fact, it could be zero if I put some negative charges over here. Boom. Now there's probably, whoa. That's kind of cool looking. I want to find where it's zero though. Oh, oh gosh darn. It's going to drive me nuts. It's going to drive you crazy trying to find it. There. Oh, oh, almost had it. Close enough. We'll call that zero. Let's plot that. Boom. There's my zero potential line. Let's find the zero around these guys. Ooh, it's way out here. Get way out, way out. Oh, let's, okay, let's do it this way. <laughs> let's cheat. Now I can find my zero potential. No, I can't. Du -du -du -du. <laughs> Wrong. Sorry. This is what you're going to be kind of doing in lab. You're going to be trying to find where it's zero. Help. Come back. Shane. <laughs> let's go to where it's... Come on now. Help a brother out for crying out loud. Let's... Oh, now it's off the, th off the chain. All right. It's got it. Okay, there's three volts. Now, somewhere here, it's got to be negative. All right, it's got to be zero between these two. There we go. Uh, let's call that, oh, you're killing me. You're, you're, it's just killing me. All right, so let's just put this, let's plot this point right here. All right, let's say that these two are our zeros. This is what you're going to be doing in lab, okay? So you're going to go around, you're going to say, oh, okay, and you're going to, find some certain points and you'll sketch in like what I'd like for you to do this is what happens happened in lab before what I'd like for you to do is um, sketch real lightly where your zero potential lines are and then you can kind of see where the positive charge is okay and if it's if you got a negative on this side and a positive on this side well then your negative charges are over here and your field lines are going towards the negative charge Okay, and they're coming out from the positive charge. So that'll help you when you're drawing your field lines when you go do your lab, okay? Because that's what, that's what the lab is, is drawing the electric field lines, okay? Based on finding the potential. So I wanted to show you this because it kind of goes hand in hand with what we're doing here. All right, so now, uh, now that one last little thing. Oh my gosh, I'm going to kill all my, show you all the fun stuff. Now, this is something that, is habit forming, okay? It's, it, you play electric field hockey, okay? Here's a positive charge, and now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put a bunch of, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is try and score a goal, okay? So if I put a positive charge here, notice the little, feel, the, that's the force that it feels, right there. Um, yeah, I wanna see the field lines. There's the field lines coming off from that thing. So that's not gonna help me score a goal, because if I start, watch what happens. Whoa, the positive charge goes away. Huh. So that didn't work. Let's reset. So let's get rid of this positive charge. Now, if I'm trying to get this bolt, this puck into this goal, this little positive puck, what charges should I put close to the negative? Or bleh, <laughs> what, what charges should I put close to the goal? What positive or negative? Negative. So let's put a negative charge. Let's put a negative charge right here. This should be easy. Boom. Let's start. Okay, now it's starting to feel the, it feels the electric field on a charge, it feels a force. And so now it's starting to move. There it moves. Boom. Hey, we scored. Ta-da. All right. Now you might be going, well, that's kind of stupid. Yeah, a little bit. But you can also make it, now that's just, that's just practice. You can go like this. Ooh, now, how are we going to get this thing into the goal? Let's, let's have one where it pushes it up this way and then attracts it down here. Let's see if this works. Start, push it up. All right, come on back, come on back. Oh, I need more. Reset, there we go. Now start, come on back. Oh, see, there you get the clue. See what I'm saying? It's, it's tricky. And this, <laughs> this takes over. I, I'm, what you, and this is available to all of you. All you got to do is go to, the, go to Google and type in that 
uh, capital P, small h, capital E-T, your FET, your physics, educational technology. It's co it comes out of uh, the University of Colorado Boulder. And this replaces Minesweeper, okay? As far as, okay, I really don't feel like writing that paper. Oh, let's play a little Minesweeper first, you know, before we start, like, that kind of thing. Or, all right, let's, let's try, let's just raise that up a little bit and reset. Let's see if it works. Or as I waste some more of your time. Oh, come on now. Oh, close. But that's all right. So you see how now you can really make it hard. You can go up to level three. That's like impossible. I've never been able to do that. But anyway, all right. So that how much fun can you have in one day? So um, we can have a whole lot of fun with this problem. All right. So now we've got an electric field. Now this is a positive charge. So the field lines are coming out of here. Um, and since this is Q2 and it's got six, we could actually draw like six field lines coming out of here. I got a quick question for you. If this is a positive charge and this is a positive charge, somewhere along here, would the electric field be zero? If this is positive and this is positive, would somewhere the electric field be zero between the two? Yeah, yeah, sure would. Um, let's go to this charges and fields thing again. Take this away, boom, boom, boom. Oh, why don't you hit reset, dummy? No, that's too easy. All right, uh, let's take this positive charge, and let's put this positive charge right here. Boom. Now, here's some E-field sensors. Oh, show numbers, that would help. There we go. Uh, 2.2, 2. okay, now, first of all, they, they show uh, electric field, you know it right now in Newton's per coulomb, force per coulomb, okay? But this is also, you can also show it in volts per meter, which we'll get to in a minute. But anyway, if I slide this back this way, oh, see, it's getting too big. I want it to be zero. Oh, come on. It's got to be zero somewhere. The, that's, uh, that's getting pretty small. There, see, as we scooch, closer this way, now it's down to 0 0.7, and then eventually it's going to get, as I move this 0 0.7, as I move a little bit more this way, it'll, it'll eventually be zero. All right, so you can, you can get it to be zero between the two. So, let's look at what the formula is for the electric field. There's two formulas that lead into it, okay? Here you go. First of all, the force that something feels, that will not show up at all. The force of something field is equal to um, the test tar charge Q times the electric field caused by a bunch of different charges. Okay, we just add up all the all the charges there, as you saw when we kept adding charges. Okay, you, E and then some charge Q that you put out there. There, there it is. And so uh, the electric field then just to divide out that little test charge Q naught is equal to the force divided by Q naught. And I think you have a homework problem that's, that, that shows you something screwy, and we might just do those two homework problems, and then we'll have to come back and finish chapter 15 next week, because you've got to kind of need to know this stuff pretty well. All right, so anyway, um, and then E is actually equal to now, if the force, because we know this, we know that the force, though, is also equal to K times Q naught times the big Q of, that's made of all the charges that make up this E, okay, divided by R squared, where K is equal to that 9.00 um, times 10 to the ninth um, newtons, per, newtons per meter squared per coulomb squared, okay? All right, now, um, and so that's what force is equal to. Now what happens when we divide, about, divide the Q naught out of this? We wind up with K times the Q caused by all those other charges times the R squared, however far away we are. So that's what we're doing with this problem here. We've got two charges. These two guys make my big Q, okay? He's going to cause an E that goes this way, and he's going to cause an E that goes this way. And so let's take a look at how we would set up that problem. Um, I'm going to try it this way. And you all can squawk and, and complain 
and say, that doesn't work. Well, we'll see. Um, we'll see if it does or not. Okay. All right. Oh, let me know if this is too horrible for words. Okay. So, here's what we've got. I was not going to show it at all. I thought this thing was supposed to be some kind of magical thing. Oh, i got to turn on these guys. Why isn't it upper lamps? <sighs> we got it now? Yes, we do. Okay. All right. There we go. Mr. Technology here. All right. Now, yeah. so we've got this. I'm just going to do the one. Now, he's at uh, negative 9 here, and I've got Q2. I've got Q1 here at positive 12, or is it positive 12 up here? It's 12 here, and it's 16 down here, right? Okay, now, this isn't so bad. Let's zoom in. Ooh, this is scary. Zoom in, zoom in just a little bit. Does that work? Oh, yeah. Ooh, cool. All right, now, this, Q, this Q2 was, well, first of all, let's figure out what the R distance is. This R for 1, this would be Q1. This R1, if this is, if this is 16 and this is 12, what does R1 have to be? 3, 4, 5 would be what? I heard somebody mutter it. 20, right? So this good old 3, 4, 5 right triangle. So that's 20 meters. So R2, if this is 9 and this is 12, what does this R2 have to be? What does R2 have to be? This is like 3, 4, 5, so it's 15. And, it, and it is, you can verify that by going 9 squared plus 12 squared, taking the square root, and you get 225. The square root of 225 is 15 meters. All right, so here's what we're going to do. We've got to find the E field right here. Now, Here's E2 going like this. Here's E1 going like this. Okay? So we've got to add up those vectors. Oh, joy. That's our most favorite fun thing to do, is add up vectors. Well, let's take a look at this angle right here. We, what we have to do is we have to find out this, this angle here, or we'll call it theta, and this angle phi right here. Okay? And I'm starting to get, aw get away from you here. All right, so here's angle theta, here's angle phi. Now, angle theta is going to be the tangent of six, the inverse tangent of 16 over 12. I don't know. I don't know what it is. I haven't worked it out that far yet. Okay? Angle phi will be what then? Anyone? Bueller, anyone? It's Friday. It would be the inverse tangent of 9 over 12. Is angle phi. Okay, so we've got E1 of in the y direction pushing up this way. And we also have E2 in the y direction pushing up that way. And E2 in the x direction coming this way. And E1 in the x direction going that way. So what you have to do is you have to take, you're going to have to take, let me put the x's here. And the E2 of X there, E1 of, you're going to take your vector sums. All right? So, the sum of the vectors in the, e, in the X direction are, you've got um, this one, this E1, times the, uh, looks like the sine of theta. This is one of those screwy ones where we've got, where we're actually doing the x thing, we've got the sine because it's the opposite, it's the opposite leg. E1 sine of theta, and it's negative, plus E2 sine of phi. Okay? And then, in the y direction, they're both positive. And they're both cosine this time, E1 cosine theta, and plus E2 cosine of phi. 
where we, where we learned that theta was equal to the inverse tangent. Is that even on the screen? Yeah, inverse tangent of 16 over 12. And phi was equal to the inverse tangent of 9 over 12. Okay, now, the only thing left to do is figure out what E1 and E2 is, then plug them in, and then you get the overall. E1 is going to equal K times Q1 over R1 squared. And the numbers are provided. We've, we've figured out what the numbers are. E2 is going to equal K times Q2 over R2 squared. There's a little bit to these problems, aren't there? There's a little bit. All right. So then you've got the numbers for all these. You've got the numbers for all these. Okay. And then you can, and we figured out what theta was, so you can, so you can figure that out. And then, of course, when you're all said and done, what do they, okay, so they want the EX. This would be your first answer. And um, I had a student ask, how do you put these, how do you put that when they, do this to you. Let's go to computer here real quick. Does that all work for you, writing it this way? Is that okay? Yeah. All right, okay. Yeah, I like it because I can bounce back and forth without eh, eh, eh. Okay. When uh, E of A of X would be that first thing that we did, and then you just put a comma, you get whatever your answer is, and you put a comma, and then you put in whatever E A of Y is. And the way you write scientific notation is you do it this way. Let's say your answer came out to be, I, don't, I have no idea what the answer is. Let, well, let's just show the answer. If it makes me show the hands, I'm going to get really angry. Oh, spare me. Stop it. It's going to take forever. Open. Oh, open, open. Open. Uh, you're making me mad. Oh, oh, I got to submit answers now. Oh, my God. When did I get there? we will be here at 4 o'clock. Sorry about that. Oh, sh can I show the answer now? Okay. So let's show the answer. Are you sure? Yes. Okay. So one of them came out to be zero, actually because of the geometry of the problem, the x direction, the, those two guys canceled each other out, as it turns out. I didn't know that going in. You could kind of tell by looking at it that maybe it would because they're nice, all nice multiples kind of thing. Um, and then this one came out to be 0 0.003. Okay, so you put that comma because they're asking for a coordinate system. So you put the comma between them. All right. Yeah, you're Schluto trained. You know all that stuff. So that's good. Okay. All right, so now let's... Uh, um, okay, so we've kind of explained the electric field here a little bit. Yeah, this thing, I was reading it going, oh, yeah, I can explain all this stuff to him in no time. Let's take a look um, at the uh, actual lecture thing. I wasn't going uh, um, and I've got like a little quiz when, we, when we're doing the lecture. Let's just kind of go through the lecture about 10 minutes worth. So we've got one problem done. Then we'll look at your last pro Yes, Jordan. Okay, if you, if, you, if you got an answer of, oh yeah, I didn't finish my explanation of scientific notation. If you get an answer of like three, oh dear, 3.0 times, oh that's much better, to the negative third, the way you do that, the way you put in scientific notation on there, on the thing is you go 3.0 and then you go shift asterisk. Oh, no, 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 it won't. Oh, oh, yeah, don't put your X. Don't put X. Hit the asterisk. Make sure you hit shift asterisk. And then it puts in the times. It puts in a little times dot. And then put in 10. And then you drop down. 
Yeah. Then then you drop down. It's got a little window there where you can you can put your exponents in. Drop that down and put in your negative three, and it should work. Yeah. No. Don't put in your negative fourteen zeros because if you're me, I'd lose track. You know, real quick. Okay. So that's how you do that problem. A little ugly, but but most of them, some of them are multiple choice and everything. So that's kind of nice. And the way the multiple choice works is if you take a wild guess, if you swag it, smart wild ass guess, okay, and you miss. Um, it takes two, point, two percentage points off, but only that problem, not your overall homework score, okay? So if each homework is worth, uh, so if you try five times on one multiple choice thing, it's worth 10 points, um, you'll, only, you'll, you'll get 9.5 points for it, I think, or something like that, right? No, nine points, nine points. So five guesses, and if there's five things there, yeah, you should you should do okay. Should be all right. We've thrown enough of these things in there now. So let's before before we uh, exhaust you any further, um, let's go on and look at some of the uh, at the lectures here. Um, let's just start with the electric field here. Here we go. The electric field. All right. Um, let's start slideshow. View show. I wanted to start from the current slide, not there, but this one won't let me do that. Okay, electric field. Now notice, we got a bunch of positive and negative charges here, and we got a bunch more positive than we do negative charges, so therefore it wins out. All right, the, the electric field coming out of there would be pointing in this direction, the E, and this charge Q is going to feel a force. That charge Q is going to feel a force caused by that E. Okay, it's going to be feel a force caused by these charges here. Okay, now again, the E field is going this way, but what if it's a negative charge and we let it go? Which way is it going to go? It's going to come back here, right? And also, if it if it actually comes back here and collects up, and um, if it's a negative, it'll wipe out one of these guys and it'll actually reduce the E field. But anyway, there you go. All right. And here's the electric field lines. They've got to be in proportion. Here's your formula for the electric field. KQ over R squared, where that Q is the, all the charges that make up the electric field, or all the charges that makes up the electric field. Okay, so the closer these electric field lines are to each other, the stronger the force gets. So, of course, the closer you get to the charges, the stronger the electric field. Just like gravity, the closer to the center of the Earth you get, the greater gravity gets. Same type of thing. All right. Except unlike gravity, the force can either repel you, depending on what your charge is, or attract you. Okay. Whereas gravity is always attracting. Whoosh. All right. And here we just did. We just looked at the. Uh, do they use the word superposition? Superposition just means this: you add up all the vector sums. That's all superposition means. Okay. That's what it means. So if I've got two negative charges here one positive charge here and they're the same uh, coulombs or whatever, then here you go. So this electric field is going to want to go this way. This one is pushing that way. And so the resulting, ele the resultant electric field is that one right there. It's just the sum of the vector. It's a vector sum. So you got to use those xy coordinates again. There's no way to avoid it. All right. Oh, oh, yeah, here is your quiz question. All right, here you go. Here you go. Get out, play half a sheet of paper, whatever, if you want to. Yeah, it's annoying, I know. And I haven't even given the other quiz to Zeng yet. He's my grader, right? I think. You don't know. <laughs> I'm just the hired help, don't ask me. Okay, I think it's Zeng. All right, here you go. This is a tough one. Tough question. But you should get credit for coming on this dreary Friday afternoon to class. All right. Okay. This, this, let's just, I'll count them for you. This positive charge has, uh, this positive charge has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electric field lines coming out of it. This, and notice the, the arrows are going away. Okay. Now then, this one is half of a negative charge, so it's got half of them coming in. Now this one is going to be negative one and a half Q. 
So go ahead and draw what that should look like. How many field lines should that have and which way should the arrows be going? Ready, set, go. Don't forget to put your name on it. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, draw what the field like. Okay, if this is, here's the situation. This Q, this Q is the magnitude wise is the same. Okay, so here's Q with eight. Here's a positive, and notice the field lines are going away. Here's, here's a negative half Q. Okay, it's got, how many four field lines does it have? Four. Which way are the arrows going? Because it's negative. In. Okay? So this one is negative one and a half Q. So how many field lines would it take? Uh oh! You, you steal everybody's aha moment, why don't you? But anyway, yeah. Some, somewhere between 11 and 13. Okay? Yeah, discuss about yourself. I'll give you a topic. Rhode Island. It's not a road. It's not an island. Discuss. But go ahead and draw them. Now remember, they're going to be they're going to be equally distributed throughout, and the arrow should be going where? Inward or outward? Inward. There you go. I, this is just untenable. I mean, it's not too bad for a lecture and stuff, but for a test, I'm just thinking, you know what I could do? I'm, I'm mulling it over, and you all go, yeah, yeah, do that, do that, of doing, putting an assignment on the thing of like five or six problems and just having it be timed for a test, and you could do it at home. Thinking about doing that. Give you like two hours. You won't know what your answers are. I'll only know the answers. So you won't sit there and keep submitting and going, ah, I got it wrong. You won't know. But I'm just one. Yeah, and you can only submit it once. So it's like, huh? Ah! And then I don't know how I do partial credit or anything. So, well, I would, I would um, publish it like on midnight Tuesday and I would close it as of 3 o'clock on Wednesday or something like that. Then it automatically gets graded and everything. But yeah, no partial, I hate no partial credit. I can't stand that. So we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Because just, I'm just looking at like my merry band right here in the middle. What's that? <laughs> Caleb, your union rep. Yes. All right. All right. Now. Okay. So we're done with that. All right, don't forget, uh, I want to collect that, so don't get away. So, so you should have nice, neat, 12 electric field lines. Okay. All right, so we've uh, ever got, oh, yeah, by the way, field lines never cross each other, so you never get positives. In the, um, if you've got two positive charges, the field lines will bend away, they'll, they'll curve away from each other. Um, they can never cross. That's why you get zero between two charges some places. Here's a dipole. Da, da, da. Ah! Here's the, here's the next formula that will help you on one of your problems. You've got a, uh, we'll look at one of your, your problems here later on too. Yeah, that, I was going to try and finish this chapter today. There's no way. Okay. So we'll look at, because didn't you all have a problem? Did you all see that one yet? Where you've got a parallel plate capacitor. Here's a parallel plate capacitor. In other words, these field lines are all made up with charges on this side. Here's the positive charges emanating down here to the negative charges. Basically, this is a battery, too. You got a potential difference. In other words, you got a bunch of positive charge up here, negative charge up down here. That's a potential difference. It's ready to do work. It can, uh, um, now, if, and in fact, it does do work because on your, one of your things, we've got this thing sideways. So imagine it vertical instead of horizontal. And if I put a charge in here, What's going to happen? It's going to accelerate and go this way. Okay? That's the key to that one problem when it says how fast is this thing or how far is this thing going to go in the x direction in 0.8 seconds. Have you all seen that problem yet? Basically what it's trying to tell you is if it's got the force on it is going to be um, the force on it 
is going to be the, the Q of the electric field. It gives you what the electric field is. It tells you what the charge is. So you go QE, that gives you the force. Then you've got to take that force and go, oh, what else does force equal? MA. MA, there you go. And so that's the way you get the acceleration because it gives you the mass too. So there you get the acceleration and it gives you a time. So therefore, and you figure the initial velocity is zero. So there you figured out that x equals one half at squared. Ooh, going back to chapter two type problems. Okay, so that's how you work that one problem is you got to figure out. And then it asks you, it asks you what the electric, uh, what the charge is if these two plates were 4.2 centimeters across. And here for a parallel plate capacitor, for a parallel plate capacitor, the E field is equal to this. It is equal to 4 pi K Q over A, which is the area of one of the plates. Okay? Now, I didn't derive that because I don't know how. I did once. I, I've had to drive it once, and I said I'm never going to do that again. But anyway, um, that was for like physics 525. You get to derive these kinds of lovely little things like this. But in this class, it's great. We just tell you, hey, there's, here's what the E field is. And then it asks you on that problem, it will ask you, well, what's the total charge if the plates are 0.42 centimeters on a side? Now remember, you got to convert everything to meters when you're doing this. This we're dealing in SI units. So that's that. So that's that one problem. I thought it was kind of tricky. I was like, oh, they got to know some stuff here. Got to know. In other words, you can't forget. You can't flush. Or you can't do a brain flush from what you did in physics one. All right. So in other words, it carries on through. All right. Five more minutes, and then and then we can vacate the premises. All right. Okay, here's field lines of no charge, conductors and electric fields. All right, this, this might help you on some of your multiple choice questions that you have. Electric charges are free to move within a conductor. Therefore, there cannot be a static field within uh, the conductor. Okay, the electric field is zero inside a charged conductor. All right. So inside, if I have a spherical shell, or even if I have a solid sphere, okay, even if I have a solid sphere, and, it's in, and I induce a negative charge on the thing, guess what happens? All those charges are on the outside. They're not on the inside. And in fact, we use that idea, we use that idea to um, protect circuitry inside your computers, inside your phones, and all that kind of stuff. That's why things are not inside a rubber box, but inside a metal box. Because outside electric fields then will go to that conducting thing on the outside, on the outside surface of the metal box, which inside has the, has the fancy circuitry. Okay? And so there's no electric field inside, so it's protected. All right? So you don't get any wild things. Any excess charge on an isolated conductor resides entirely on the surface of the conductor. Okay, so everything, all excess charges on the outside. Okay. These are under electrostatic conditions. Okay. So let's just say the static field within the conductor. All right. Okay. All right. In other words, the field is not moving. Okay. All right, there can't be a component. All right, in other words, electric field lines, we already discussed that. Electric field lines on the outside of a conducting surface will always be perpendicular. And most of them will crowd around. Uh, the sharper the surface, the more conducting, um, the, the more charge is located there. That is why, that is why lightning rods are shaped like they are. Have a point at the end instead of a big flat paddle or something, okay? Because a big flat paddle won't attract that much negative charge because it's all sp it's spread out too far. But if I have a pointy end like this, a bunch of negative charge, then when that ionized cloud goes boom, okay, 
and the negative charges start coming down out of the cloud, they're going to want to go here, okay, instead of to the flat panel or to the guy playing golf. All right. So, so anyway, that's, that's why they do that. Okay, Gauss's Law, we will start on um, Friday. You've, uh, Wednesday. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, they have a safe three-day weekend. Don't forget to turn in that arduous quiz you had. Is, is my boy R. Kelly here? Sean in the house? No, there he is. 